Hey guys, hey gals, this is Three Points Dave again from BeerLeagueHeroes.com. This vlog tonight, it will be up tomorrow morning, but this is about today's trades with a few points after that. Uh, overall, I like what Shirley did. Um, I, I think Nelson going to St. Louis, it's going to give him some playing time with the injury to Jake Allen. And uh, he gets to play with the playoff club. And uh, that's going to give him a lot of experience moving forward. I think the Nicholas Lundstrom acquisition is just simply taking a contract back. I don't think it really holds any meaning to it. I think the big acquisition there was a fifth rounder. And that's really, you know, what Shirley was aiming for. Now, with the Nielsen trade, it allows Laurent Brossois to come up. And Laurent Brossois, in two of his games, he was unbelievable. You know, I mean, he was making the big save when it had to be made. You know, he for, for, you know, 2021, he was looking very calm, very composed. Now, with the personal trade, there was a bit of backlash on Peter Shirelli for this trade. Um, I don't understand it. You know, he's on a, on a cup-contending team. Teddy Purcell is a third-line scorer, probably, right? But, I mean... That's the thing, guys. He's a third liner, a, an unrestricted free agent at season's end, making $4 million, 4.5, whatever. You know, he's got a high price tag. You're not going to get a roster player for him. I thought Peter Shirelli was a genius in acquiring a third round pick. I mean, that's how smart this guy is. You know, Peter Shirelli wants it, what he wants, and he gets it. Um,. You know, and Petty Purcell, he's got a chance to go to Florida, play with the likes of Jonathan Huberto, Nick Bukestad, uh, Yarmir Yager, uh, Aaron Ekblad, you know, Roberto Luongo, Willie Mitchell, all these really good players. And he's got a chance to get into the playoffs where he's pretty damn good and try for a cup, you know. And I, I think that getting the third, the third round pick out of Florida for that, what a steal. You know, I, I, I really like that trade. I thought it was a great trade for us, and in the end, I do believe Shrelly will use it as currency to get another roster player, because a third-round pick, some people may agree, may agree, may disagree, but I certainly think it holds somewhat a decent amount of value with where the orders are at in the standings. Now, the Justin Schultz one. This one, I, I liked it, but I, I don't think it was amazing, mainly because of the salary retainment. Now, with that being said, the only way we were going to trade Justin Schultz in the 3.9 cap hit is if we retained at least 50%, you know, the, the maximum. Um, that's only 1.95. So in the end, I think Shirelli took Pittsburgh to the tool shed. Um, now, again, that's depending on if Schultz shines, which I don't really expect him to do that in 20-odd games of Pittsburgh. Because, I mean, they're still in the battle for the playoffs. But with Pittsburgh, he'd get Schultz, he, you know. He gets a chance to, uh, to to play some meaningful games, you know, late around this time. And getting that third, third round pick, I mean, for Schultz, that's huge. Huge. All right. Now, I got a couple of comments. First and foremost, watching Peter Shirelli's press conference interview regarding the trades, he's, he has simply said that he wants to keep dry settlement David and Nuge as the centers for now. He hasn't been able to see him all season, obviously, because of the injuries, as we all know, right? But he wants to see, he, he, he said it's unfair to evaluate the entire outlook of the team right now because, one, McDavid got hurt. Jordan Eberle missed the first 13 games, I think it was, of the, uh, of the season. And then Clefbaum got hurt, and he's still up. And, you know, with Nuge and Clefbaum being out, you know, it, it creates a big hole for us. I mean, with the, if, the, if the injuries wouldn't have happened, I mean, who knows where we would be, really. I mean, I'm not going to say playoffs. I'm not going to say not playoffs because I don't know. But what I do know is, you know, who knows where we could have been. You know, we, we could have been buyers or we still could have been sellers. It's, I'm not going to base it off what else because I don't do that. I think that's stupid, first and foremost, and I think it's unfair. But I, I, do, I do agree with Shirelli, you know, running with three centers for this season and, you know, maybe, maybe going into next year. You know, why not? I mean, Drysaddle, we don't have to negotiate his deal until next offseason. So, I mean, if they want to run with three centers even going into next season, hey, I'm all for it. You know what, guys? I'm all for that because you got McDavid, you got Drysaddle, and then you got Nugent, 
say Nugent Yakupov or Nugent Eberly, you know, if Yakupov's here next season, you know, you, you, you got your third line center in Nugent Hopkins who's battling basically third pair in D-man kind of thing, right? So I think that's huge, absolutely huge. And that's a bonus for our team. Now, another point that my uh, other point that I want to address is Peter Shirelli saying that he wanted to see about acquiring a defenseman or two to test drive. Now, I think that's huge. Again, I mean, we're in 30th place, guys. Whatever. May as well experiment a little bit. I mean, the season's over. You know, I mean, Laurent Brossois is going to get some starts here down, down the stretch, and uh, we're going to test drive a defenseman or two and whatever. Play out the season, you know. Um, and I, I think, once, like I said, I think that's good for the club. You know, you, you can bring in a guy that, you know, either he makes an impact or he doesn't. Like Adam Clendenning. Either he makes an impact or he doesn't. And I think Adam Clendenning has been better than Justin Schultz, but that's just my opinion. Okay? Now, I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here because this is really bugging me, okay? Now, I understand that fans have some fans on Twitter, Facebook, hockey pages, hockey sites, all this type of stuff, blog sites, everything. They've been ripping Shirelli on these trades, okay? Justin Schultz is, in my opinion, not an NHL defenseman. I hope he certainly turns out to be one because he, he's an absolute class act. He never once dissed the fans that I remember, maybe I'm wrong, or the city of Edmonton. He took everything in stride, even when the fans were booing him, and that's wrong, you don't boo a player. I understand it, but that's still bullying. To mom and dad out there, you're telling your, you're telling your kid they're not bully at school, right? But then you take your kid to the hockey game and you're, bull, you're, you're booing a hockey player. That's bullying. Don't do it. It doesn't belong in the game. I understand you're frustrated and pissed off, but how does that player feel? Okay, he's, he's losing confidence as it is, and I know I'm going to get eaten alive for this, but I really don't give a shit. I don't care. You don't boo a player. I never once booed Justin Schultz. Not once. Okay? Yeah, you know, I cussed out Teddy Purcell with F-bombs, but not once did I ever hate him. Not once. He's a good complimentary forward to skilled talent. Okay? Now, to the older generations, stop living in the past. 30 years ago, the Oilers 5 and 7. Celebrate it. Remember it. It's over, boys. It's over, girls. Leave it in the past where it belongs. New arena, new captain in the future in Connor McDavid, new GM Peter Shirelli, new head coach in Todd McLeod. Leave the past where it is. Celebrate it. Drink to it. Drink your whiskey, your beer, whatever you want. I'll drink a beer to it right now. All right. Celebrate the past. Enjoy it. Love it. It's over. Okay? But there will never be another team like the 80s Oilers ever again. The team that's the closest to that is the Chicago Blackhawks with three cups in six years. That's it. So get your head. If, if, if I'm serious, you know, I'm sorry. If I'm going to be a little brash here and a little blunt. But if you're going to be living in the past and dissing this organization for every goddamn move that they're making with Peter Shirelli... He built a Stanley Cup champion in the Boston Bruins when they won the Cup in 2011. Okay? When he went there, they had nothing. And I mean nothing. Nothing. All right? With this team, he comes here, there's already a core in place. This team's already better than what, Boston, than what the Boston Bruins were when he joined them first. In 06, 07, whatever it was. Okay? So stop trying to have extremely high expectations. Stop doing it. Okay, it's going to take time. He built the Boston Bruins from bottom of the league to a cup contender in one offseason. One. Two months. One offseason. He'll do it here. He said in his press conference interview a few days ago, I built the cup contender in Boston in one year. We went from bottom of the league to the playoffs. I don't see why I can't do it here. Let him work, people. Please. Let him work. All right? That's all I ask. Because I'm sorry, that fires me up. It really does. Give the regime time okay give them time please beerleaguehoes.com like share subscribe everything you hate what i said comment you like what i said comment right on boys and girls till next time see you later